promise. The, the Lord will always show you his promise. He will always show you the promise. He will always show you where he's taking you to. But he'll never show you the promise. He'll show you the promise. He'll show you the throne that you're being built on. He'll show you the promise, uh, his, 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 his family bowing to him. He'll show him the, the, the promise, but he won't show you the process. He won't show you the betrayal. He won't show you the fit. He won't show you the prison. Because you'll tell God, forget it, go and see somebody else. <laughs> I ain't going. I'm buffing. <laughs> but he will always show you the promise. And in her particular situation, God had a promise for a prophetic word of where he wanted to take her, right? I'm going I'm to make you a prophet unto the nation. Now, those are, those are big shoes to fill. And, and along with, listen, newer levels, higher levels bring higher depth. So God says, if I'm going to take you there, i got to put you through a fire. Because if I don't put you, listen, promotion without process is dangerous. So God says, I'm gonna, before I promote you, I'm going to put you through a process so that once you're there and these higher devils come, you'll be prepared. You'll have the full armor of God. And you'll be able to withstand all the fiery darts of the enemy. You'll be standing on a house that was built on solid ground. Powerful, but it's the truth. But if God will promote a person without the process, then listen, that's why you see a lot of people that sound good, look, they have the form of God. But their life, their walk, and the end result denies the power of them. And that's why they get caught up in all kinds of mess. And I tell people that are beginning in ministry, I always counsel this and share this with them. I say, hey, there's a mess inside of each of you, especially as you're beginning. So God will allow a lot of conflict, a lot of uh, arguments and things will arise in your marriage and relationships at your job, but it's not about the other person. You got to remember that there's a call of God upon your life, that there's somewhere that God showed you the promise, God showed you the ministry, God showed you to be preaching to the nations. So what God wants to do is deal with that mess that's inside you. So he knows that that person at your job, he knows maybe your wife or maybe your husband, maybe your children, whoever it may be, he knows that they know how to pull that mess out of you. And when it happens, what do you do? Do you point the finger? Oh, no, but they did this. They did that. Look what she did. Look what he said. Look, no. God wants you to look at why are you so angry? Why are you so upset? Why are you looking to get vengeance? Why are you looking to blame? You ain't perfect either. So once we begin to accept that reality, once we begin to say, you know what, I got a mess. I got to deal with this mess. I got to take my mess into prayer. I can't take my wife's mess into prayer. I can't take my children's mess into prayer. I got to take my mess into prayer and into fasting. So God can remove, that's the flux in your life. Because the goldsmith, when he, when, 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 once the goldsmith starts burning that, that that uh, uh, that's the impurities in life. Once that goldsmith starts burning that that gold, once he starts setting it on fire, he puts the flux in it. That's the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and that flux will bring out impurities so that God can remove it. Because with that mess, you you may go to the next level if you don't confront that mess. If you don't if you don't hold hold yourself accountable, be responsible. You may take that mess to another level. Then you'll make a mess of what God is trying to do. I've seen many do it. I mean, you can look at them, they're gifted, they're talented, big name, uh, many nations, right? And, and then you hear, wow, they fall in all kinds of sin. Does that mean that God didn't call them? No. You mean to tell me God didn't call Saul? You mean to tell me that God didn't call Balaam? And the Bible says Balaam is in hell. The Bible teaches that. You mean to tell me that God didn't call uh, 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 Samson? God called him. You mean to tell me that, that, that God, that, that Jesus spent all night in prayer and
And then he came down with a list. And guess who was one of the people on the top 12 list? Jesus. That means God looks at everybody. That means that God calls you because at that moment, you're honorable. Your you're, you're walk is right with God. And God, and listen, when, 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 when you're walking right with God, it doesn't matter your ending. At that moment, God is faithful to his word, and he's going to give you what he's asking for. But what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Just because you're gifted and talented, just because you're anointed, doesn't mean you're walking right with God. That's a whole different level. Everybody is born with a gift. Everybody, people have encountered. And, 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 and people, listen, I've seen this so many times. People come to me, right? And, 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 and as a pastor, my heart goes out to them because they're like, Pastor, you know, I'm doing this for God and I'm doing that for God. I'm doing that for God. You can't even show up on a Wednesday to church. It's going to get real quiet in here. I'm being real with you. You can't even show up to an event. And I'm not talking about people that can't do it, that had other plans or family emergency arose. And I'm not talking about that. We're talking about people that yesterday they sat at home. Being able to be here made an excuse or because they weren't feeling. We don't walk by feeling. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Listen. I'm going to tell you something, and, and, and these are things I tell you, these are nuggets I share with you because, because I, God walked me through it and taught me, and I had to write it down. Why? Because for seven years I was ministering, I was preaching, I was a prophet unto the nations, and then I fell from the grace of God, and that cost me 22 years of ministry. This is good because if, 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 if stop, listen, you don't, if you're going to get married because you're in love, you're in trouble, your marriage has already failed. Oh, how are you going to say that? It's the truth. You don't get married because you feel like getting married or because I'm in love. Because I'm going to tell you something. That eventually, that feeling you have, which is more probably sensual than it is genuine, is going to come to an end. Once that routine of, like I've told you before, that everyday routine, now, hallelujah, the honeymoon is over, the cruise is over, and now i got to take out the garbage every day, and now i gotta, I got to cut the grass, and now i got to pick the weeds, and now, and now i got to go. That's going to end one day. Huh? And you're going to need something a little more than love. You're going to need commitment. You're going to need loyalty to the vows that you took up. You're going to need a lot more than just love. You're going to have to be responsible, hold yourself accountable, and understand that this is my duty to God and to the woman that I chose. Oh, no. Those of us who like to complain about our wives, huh, look in the mirror and we realize that you picked him. Huh? And you picked him. Huh? It's the first thing you need to understand. But listen, it takes a lot more. It takes commitment. But it doesn't change with just your wife. That's why the Bible compares our relationship with Christ like a marriage. So that you understand that there's days you're going to wake up and you're not going to feel the love. You're not going to feel the, 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 the fire, right? You're not going to feel that. All the emotions. You're going to wake up one morning and not want to go to church. But it's time to go there. You're going to wake up one day and say, you know what? They got a, uh, an event at church to go knock on doors, but I really ain't feeling that. But you're going to say, you know what? But I want to hold myself accountable because even if I don't feel it, I'm responsible and it's my duty as a believer, born again, saved from sin and death, to go and knock on those doors. It's the truth, people of God. Hold yourself accountable. Be responsible to the call of God in your life. Grateful to God for this opportunity. I tell you, for real. Next week we have we. Next week is our one year anniversary. <laughs> our one year anniversary. So we're gonna have a uh, 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 probably like a potluck meal too as well uh, next week. And, uh, uh, but but I have a word from God for this this for this happening. Okay, so you don't want to miss it. If it was from me, I'd tell you hide and duck. But it's from God. And uh, 
we're going to go over a few things, but I, I believe that us as a whole, as a church, as a family, we're entering into a new season. All right? And, and this season is going to be a season of accountability. A season of accountability. And, and it starts with, i got to hold myself accountable before I expect anybody else to hold me accountable. There's some things that, that I, I, I really, I, I really uh, believe because the Lord has deposited in my spirit where, where we're missing the mark. Right? And, and we're missing the mark because, because it's become the norm, especially in this country, not, not in other countries. Like I tell you, where, where there's persecution in the church, where the church doesn't have no freedom to serve God, you're living in purity too. You're on fire for God like the Holy Ghost. But God has given us such a blessing, such a blessing like this, to be able to move from point A to point B to point C all over the world and preach and, and spread the gospel, and, 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 and we're not doing a very good job of it all. Right? And most of it has to do with pride. That's a whole different topic. But, 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 but I want you to understand that the kingdom of God has told us that. I want you to know that. Has told us that. There's, there's a way of doing things. There's a method to doing things. And that's the problem with the church today. The universal body of Christ today, that's the problem with it. They don't believe in holiness. They don't think that, uh, that the kingdom of God and, and, and that the universal body of Christ, that the church or the local church, that they, there shouldn't be any holiness. There shouldn't be a way of doing things. We should just be able to, they call it liberty. Freedom. They use it as a license for sin. They use it as a license to, to walk in chaos and in disorder when the Bible says that we are to do all things, not some, but all, in decency and order. Why? Because our God is not a God or an author of confusion, but of power. And this new season that we're entering in is going to be a season of holiness where we're going to learn the protocol of the kingdom and and we're not only going to learn the protocol of the kingdom, we're not just going to be a hearer of it, but we're going to begin to be a doer of it. And, and, and I want to tell you something else. that Let's like the Bible says that at the beginning, uh, discipline, it doesn't fall well with us. We really don't like it. But in the long run, we'll appreciate it. Why? Because it will teach us how to walk in decency and order. Listen, people keep praying for God to open doors as if, as if, as, as if he was a genie, open that door and I'm going to keep walking. Open that door, you're going to run into it and fall out. Yeah, but that doesn't work like that. Let me tell you how it works. Hey, Brother Ranch, Minister Randy, my brother, can you open that door for me? Do you know why? Because he knows who his pastor is. And not, only did, and not just because I rule over him, but because I give him love. I can say that. I know that because I love him. That's how God opens doors. When you follow kingdom protocol, then when you're walking towards that door, I might not even have to say that. He might get up and open that door. But if I'm not following kingdom protocol, if I'm doing things the way I want to do them, if I'm not doing things decently in order, man, I'm going to ask that Randy to open that door. You better open it yourself. Get where I'm coming from? But then there's a bigger part of that that, that sometimes we look over. Not anybody could just ask us to open the door. Oh, no, but we're all believers in Christ. That's your problem right there. We may be all believers in Christ, but because we're all believers in Christ, we're all family, doesn't mean you have the same access that the pastor has. Doesn't mean you have the same authority as the pastor has. And I'm going to tell you why you don't have the same authority. Let me tell you why. Because the responsibility and duty that you have is different than mine. God says that I'm the one that he has called to watch over your soul. You may take that lightly, but I don't. Saying that he has given the pastor custodianship of your relationship with God, of your spiritual life. That's why you have a lot of churches out there that are not walking in line. Hallelujah, the pastor ain't right, so the whole church ain't right. I mean, see it. He's soothsaying them to sleep, and 
Jesus saved everybody else that they run into the street. Jesus slaying them right to the street, right to hell eventually, unfortunately. I've seen posts by Christians that tell other Christians, hey, it's okay, we're saved. Uh, Christ passed. And they'll use this verse, past, present, and future sins have been forgiven. It doesn't matter what you do. So go to that nightclub, drink that beer, don't worry, you're okay. People are like, ah, it's getting bad. It's getting bad. Don't fall on that. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. Whether I'm here today and somebody else has nothing to do with the person. Don't personalize it. This has to do with the authority that has been set by God. This office has been set by God. Thousands of years before you decided to come along and want to do things your way or believe that things should be done this way. No, that pastorship has been established by God, and the pastor has to do things the way God tells him to do things, not you. The pastor has to need, has to, need to be concerned not about your feelings but about the feelings of God. Because if the pastor goes by everybody in here and what their opinion and what they're suggesting and whatever slip they dropped in to give opinion or suggestion, the pastor will go crazy. That's why his eyes are up in heaven, focused on Jesus and saying, Lord, lead me. There's an entry into a new season. So, I, I, like I said, the correction at the beginning may not sit well, but I can guarantee if you go home, you study it and you break it down. You take it to the scriptures. You see that it's true. It's entirely true. It doesn't mean the pastor's perfect. But if the pastor sits with you to correct you in something, to line you up with something, right? To line you up with protocol. I can guarantee if you go home and you break it up and then you line yourself up with that, I can guarantee the doors will open. Especially people that have necessities. You know you have something that you need, you have something that you, not that you want necessarily, but that you need. Some people need a job. Some people need a house. Some people need a car. Some people need money. Some people, whatever it is that you need, if you're not following kingdom protocol, you're not going to see it. I, I dare to tell you that. Put it to the test. No person can come and tell me that they're not following kingdom protocol and that they're receiving blessings from God. That is a lie from the pit of hell. The devil's blessing you, so he, you go take yourself all the way to hell. Tell the devil, not here, devil. Not here, devil. There's a way of doing things. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, the life, you know what that word way means? Methodical. Look it up. Because God says that, that the people know my heart, but Moses knows my way. He knows the way that I do things. I mean, look at Esther. Huh? Esther, chapter 4 of, of, of the book of uh, uh, Esther, chapter 4. She knew there was kingdom protocol here on earth. She knew it. And that's why she told her cousin, which is her uncle, her cousin. She told Mordecai, hey, if I do that, there's a protocol in place. And the protocol is that I cannot go before the king unless I'm coming. It will cost me my life. That comes from Romans chapter 13, verse 22. It tells you that all authority here on earth has been set by God. And so he has to follow it. And if you don't, you're not going to see it. Same thing that God told, God told Moses, the same thing. God didn't just tell Mo He told Moses, hey, he knew there was a protocol, so he sent Moses in to talk to them. Talk to them. Tell them, let my people go. There's a way of doing things. And the people of God, that's one of the things that make us different than other people. Sometimes they're better at it than we are. Huh? Sometimes people... Praise the name of God. But sometimes people in church will go to the job and respect the protocol over there more than Jesus. And it's intense. Yeah. If they're boss, you know why? Because at the end of the week, they're boss. So if they're not getting physical, a blessing, a physical blessing for it, they, oh, I'm, giving, I'm volunteering, I'm giving my, you're not volunteering nothing here. We don't have volunteers. We have staff. Because a volunteer don't get paid. Last time I checked, the Bible says that, that everything that we do unto the Lord with a pure heart will accumulate additional measure. 
Well, I, listen, you're talking to a pastor that I won't budge there. You know why? Because I know you're getting paid. It's in heaven. If you don't want to wait to get it there, if you want to hear it, it means more to you, then you got to go look for a job. <laughs> you got to look for a job. I'm being honest with you. If you thought that you came here and you found yourself one, it's the wrong place to come to. Huh? Being honest with you, wrong place to come to. So be here next week. Don't miss it. And we're going to talk about a lot. Of, we're going to talk about kingdom protocol, but we're also going to talk about the vision. We're going to articulate because there's a lot of new people from the last year to this year. A lot of new people if you look around. And I know a lot of people are missing today, but there's a lot of new people. So we're going to we're going to go over the vision again. Okay. And remember what the Bible says about vision in, in uh, Isaiah 20. Uh, 28, 19, it says, without it, the people cry for help. So I tell you in love, remember, we don't discuss people's salvation here, whether you're saved, you're not saved, that's not between, that's not between me and you, that's between you and God. Pastor's just called by God to, to put structure, to put order, amen, and to preach the word of God, to, to feed the flock, right? But, but your salvation, that's between you and God. But without vision, the Bible says people cast off his face. So I can't tell you this. If you're living a life without, if you're living a life without self-control, if you're living a life all over the place, and you, it's like you can't seem to focus, you can't seem to get it right, let me tell you why. You have no vision. Because when you have vision, when you have a prophetic picture of where God is taking you, listen, you live a life of restraint. I don't care how good a person looks. I don't care how good a thing sounds. If it don't align up with the vision that God has given me, I don't want nothing to do with it. I'm going to be careful who I choose to be friends. Hallelujah. I'm going to be careful where I choose to go, and I'm going to be careful what I choose to do. Because if it don't line up with the vision of God, I don't want nothing to do with it. That's the man with vision. 